Thank you, sir. Let me greet the entire, as we would say in the old days, the, the household of faith. And I'm um, yes, very sir. happy to meet with all of beloved ones, saints of God. I understand that there's another Blair on the line. Yes, and sir. What would you do without? What would you do without the Blairs? And this Blair, even though <laughs> I wish I could get to see him, I want to greet the. The, the people that are working with us, the youths, and <laughs> you are the, the, the blood vessel of the Church of God. The New Testament Church of God wants to let you know that we are proud of our young people, our youth leaders, and I thank God for every single one of you. Here's a group of people that this terrible disease cannot affect. And whatever yeah. the disease try to do, God is greater than all the problems that we may have. My precious youth leaders, let me encourage you to keep on keeping on for the Lord and to let you know that Jesus Christ is the one and only one that we can depend on in such a time as this. You see, when, when the devil thinks he has won, God comes in. And when he comes in, like a flood, he lifts up a standard against the enemy. I want to encourage the hearts of my youth leaders that this is not the end. This is not something for us to give up on. We are coming through in flying colors. And we are going to be tremendously victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I ask you to give my greetings to the young people in which, which you are in charge of. Let them know that we are keeping them in the bond of peace and they are in our minds, in our hearts and in our souls. I want to especially say hello to Dr. Blair, to Bishop Ram Narayan, and not forgetting our own, the tall, strong, and mighty Reverend Pinnock. Thank you, sir, for the people that you lead, and thank the people that are working with you. I hope that this evening will be a tremendous evening for everyone. One of my sorrows, though, is that I will not be able to stay with you all along, but I'll stay in to listen to some, some of what you're going on with. Let me see if you will behave like I'm not there. Hello. But I love you all. And thank you, Bishop Pinnock, for the privilege and the opportunity of allowing me to greet these fine people. The greetings from my heart, from my soul. And I tell you, this thing is nice. It feels good. And until we come again, Brother Blair saying, Shalom. Hello. Thank you, sir. We, are, we appreciate you being here. Um, and we, we look forward to having you for just a little bit longer with us. We know that you will have to go, but we look forward to having you a little bit longer with us. Reverend Ramner. Yes, and Reverend Blair um, also looks forward to, you will see them as soon as they come up on the screen, you'll be able to see them. Um, yes. And you'll be delighted to, to listen to them. So at this time, we're going to have um, greetings from Bishop uh, Dr. David Blair, who is our International Youth Director. Um, he will be coming to share greetings with us at this time and just bless us at the same time. Okay, blessings. All right, what a joy it is to be with you this afternoon, this evening. Um, I love what the person said who was uh, directing the call. They wasn't sure if it was uh, if it was evening or whatever. It is evening here. I think I'm a little one hour later than you guys. But, you know, I'm, I'm often amazed at how you folks can actually work and get anything done living in paradise. Because I know you're in paradise. I mean, Jamaica is just a little taste of heaven that we're all going to get to. I mean, with jerk chicken and all the great foods and, and vegetables that you have there. And we always enjoy coming and being a part of that. Um, 
let me greet your uh, your bishop. We have the same last name. We have different fathers, uh, earthly fathers and mothers. We have the same heavenly father. Uh, it was amazing. I guess it was last year when I was headed into uh, uh, to the airport going through immigration, and the gentleman grabbed my passport and looked at it. He looked up. He said, Blair. And I said, yeah, I'm here with the New Testament Church of God. And he says, oh, he said, okay, said, uh, didn't expect that. He said, welcome to our country. Come on in. So I just had to give him that one name, and it was an automatic, uh, it was an automatic entrance for me. But uh, I have found uh, uh, Dr. Blair to be uh, such a, not only warm and inviting person, a passionate man of God, and certainly is leading the Church of God in Jamaica to new heights uh, under his leadership and all his pastors, uh, his counsel. And I greet you today. It's such a joy, especially through this, uh, uh, this method, if we can't be there in person, to be able to, um, uh, to greet you folks today. So I honor you, Bishop, and thank you for this opportunity. And of course, um, uh, Bishop Ashram, I call him Ash for short. He's a member of our International Youth and Discipleship Board. We met last week. Uh, the one of most, uh, not only is he a fireball, as, as Bishop Pennock mentioned, he is a fireball, but he's also a great businessman. I had to call on him a few days ago, dealing with some hotel circumstances, and he's in the hotel business, actually, uh, as a man, uh, accountant, and uh, I don't know what his title is, over multiple hotels, and I said, hey, I need some help here. Tell me how hotel people think. I'm a church. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor, but uh, help me with that, and he certainly did give us some good information, and, and we're using that as we navigate through some cancellations here in the States, but I uh, appreciate him and his family, great folks also, Bishop Pennock really just uh, uh, feel like that they're part of our family. We got to meet them two years ago when I came into the department. I know you love and appreciate them. Let me say this about leadership. A lot of you that are on this call, that you are serving in some role or responsibility of leadership. But let me just say this, that if you'll be faithful to honor God in the small things, I think about the life of David, that you see God saw every time that David was writing those Psalms and hymns, David was practicing his heart, he was practicing, practicing his slingshot. He was, he was preparing himself for the day that on the greatest battlefield of his life, that God would use him to conquer the greatest giant and become actually known to the people and then right, bring him up to, uh, to be king, that God will honor you when you are faithful. I know some of you are being so faithful. You're in tough times like we are here. You're trying to find new ways of doing ministry. And I just appreciate you so much and thank you for what you're doing. I just want to share a couple of things. I, I want to read a part of the statement. I had a Zoom call of which Bishop Pennock and Bishop Ashram was on a couple of weeks ago. But as we canceled our Smoky Mountain Winter Fest, which was the largest event we do in our department, as I went over the next few days thinking, God, how does youth and discipleship, how do we, as leaders of young people and, and children's ministry, how do we not react, but how do we respond? That I think that it's time the church not just simply react to the environment and the crisis around us, but how do we respond appropriately with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the word of Almighty God, and being the hands and the feet of Jesus to communities that have been impacted by such an incredible pandemic and really around our globe. I just want to read you a, a few paragraphs of this, and then I'm going to share a challenge, and, and I'll, be, um, uh, I'll be done. But I read this to them as I began to write. We're in unprecedented times with the ongoing spread of COVID-19 and the incredible speed at which things are changing around us. What are we, the International Church of God, Youth and Discipleship Department, and leaders around the world going to do in order to respond to the crisis? How do we respond to this global pandemic? Restricted travel, in our case, school closings, event cancellations, online church, budget cuts, and so many more things. While we are facing the most uncertain times in recent history, I'm certain that none of this, not one day of this, took God by surprise. It didn't surprise him. He is omniscient. He understands and he's in charge of everything. While we're facing uncertain times that we know that it didn't take him by surprise, he continues to be large and in charge. And furthermore, I believe he set us up for one of the greatest opportunities for evangelism, for outreach and discipleship that we've seen in many, many years in a world full of panic and anxiety and negativity. There is some good news. Out of all the times you could have been a youth and discipleship team member, God thought it best to have you alive and on board today. Isn't that amazing that he planned all of this?
for you to be in the seat that you're in today, but predestined that you would be here as a leader today. That's amazing. You were thought of, even planned long before the very foundations of the earth. We were put into place to do incredible things in these very moments. Ephesians 2.10 tells us that. What do we do now? I found myself wrestling with all kinds of ideas and thoughts. As a matter of fact, my wife says I can create more work than nine people can get done in a day's time because my mind's constantly running, and I guess that's part of my personality. Uh, she says that I normally suffer from what is called, uh, I want to get out in front of every crisis and develop a game plan and help everyone to safety syndrome. But I, I, what I realized today is that I'm constantly reminded it isn't about me or a group of people in what we think. It is about Jesus Christ and what he wants. He's the king. He has the plan. My responsibility is to hear from him and get busy carrying out my part of this plan he's given to me. And I want to do that. In daily prayer, I've asked God how he would like us to respond to these uncertain times. What is our role in pointing people to Christ? How can we ramp up? Uh, discipleship opportunities, and how do we assist local churches in flipping the script to disciple people outside the walls of our church and to bring hope into their homes and their hearts. And there's about five or six different ways that I've outlined, and you'll see some of these in our response page that I'll allude to in a moment. The first thing is that I believe we have to be, we have to, we have to pray, that we have to be people who seek the wisdom of God Almighty to pursue him immerse ourselves in his word. And when we learn to pray, really pray through, like the old timers talked about, praying until you pray through, till you punch a hole in the heavens and send God, we need you to touch and change and deliver. That we need this. Prayer should be our number one job as leaders. Yes, we have a lot of stuff that we have on our plates, but before you're ever a leader, you have to be a disciple yourself and disciples have to pray. You see, pray for our schools, our neighborhoods, our communities. We pray against this virus. I've been praying, God, you, you can take this virus away in a matter of a moment's time. If you can create a body and you can set things in order, you can deal with this in just a matter of a, of, of a moment's time. I'm praying against that. I think we also have to secondly connect, and that's what we're doing today. I keep looking over to the right because all of you on our big screen right next to me. My camera's here, but I keep wanting to see all of you. I want to connect with you. A lot of you I've got a chance to meet or be a part of your, your um, sessions and at your conventions. And, and uh, I just, I, I think it's so neat, as Bishop said earlier, that we could connect at least we're maybe stuck in our homes or quarantined in our homes, or actually I'm in our basement here at our house that our son used to live in. It's called Bruce's Basement. I just took it over and made an office down here. So now when I go to office, I said, baby, I'm going to office. I'm just going downstairs. So when I get hungry, I just go back upstairs and grab some other refrigerator. But at least we have that opportunity. But we have to connect. We are social beings, and we, have to, and we need each other. We need each other in the kingdom of Almighty God. And I want to challenge you to find ways to connect with your young people, your children. Find ways. Where you know, it's amazing. These, these phones, that they do an amazing thing. I know that we do everything. We text, we email, we, we do all kinds of social media. But did you know that there's a place on here that if you actually go to it, you can dial a number. You can dial a number and somebody can pick it up and you can actually talk to them on the phone. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's novel. I realize not many of us do it, but you can actually get a voice on the other end of that phone and say, I'm just praying for you today. Thank God for you today. I got a call today from, from a bank that I use. And, and I thought, okay, here we go. What do they want? She said, this is just a call to say, we're thinking about you. Is your family okay? Is there anything we can do for my thing? Really? You're not, I'm not late on the payment. I mean, you're not trying to dun me for money. Nope. We just want to tell you that we care about you and we thank you for your business. And we just want you to know that we appreciate you being a part of our, our bank. I, I, was, I laid the phone down. I was like, honey, can you believe that? Somebody just called just to check. If we would take a moment, I know we're busy. I know we got stuff going on, but to pick that phone up and dialogue and to young people, I realize they may not know what that ringer means, but when they flip that phone open, when they pick it up and hear a voice of a leader on the other end of the line, it'll make a world of difference in their life. The, the third thing is to go digital, which we are doing. We're finding ways to be digital, to get in their world, to be social, to do our meetings like we're doing today on Zoom, our website, our social media. And I'll say this, this generation is the most savvy 
and social media presence of anybody out there. So if you don't have a Facebook, which I know that's for us old people and all the young people's like, y'all took it over and we left it, but Instagram or Twitter or whatever, find ways that we can get into their world. I'm hearing now, I heard a youth pastor the night tell me that he's actually getting on some type of video game, playing games with some of his students because they have headsets and they talk to each other as they're playing this game or whatever, Tiger Woods golf or something, they're actually interacting and talking. I thought, what a great way, having a great time, but also connecting. But then I want to challenge us to be budget-minded. And I know you guys are aware of that, but we really have to be careful that everything that we do is helping our pastor, helping our bishop, make sure that we're not just, just spending money for the sake of spending money, but we really need to be frugal because God wants us to do more with less and that we can in these times when people, some are out of work and economy, I know you guys rely on a lot of travel that may have been restricted, that may have impacted a lot of people there in the islands. But I believe this, just as quick as it went away, it will come back. I'm believing that God is going to bring not only our economy and this global economy, he's going to bring the church back. And my prayer is that when we come back, we'll be leaner, we'll be stronger, we'll be more efficient, we'll be more focused in our efforts in reaching a generation than ever before. After budget, I want us to be proactive. That sometimes, and I know you guys are busy, but maybe there's some things that's not in your job description. Maybe you serve in a certain area of your church. Find some other areas. Help somebody else. Ask your pastor, your pastor's wife, somebody, what can I do outside of my job description or my role where I could be proactive in helping? Just recently, on Sunday, Easter Sunday, uh, this area, Hamilton County, Bradley County, these cities around here, we had four tornadoes to hit the area. I think 17 people lost their lives just right here in this area. I've been just amazed the last couple of days that youth pastors and leaders I've seen, they're passing out sandwiches and drinks to the rescue crews who are working. They're, they're being proactive. They're not sitting at the house and they're not afraid of a virus, but they're getting their mask on, putting their gloves on, and they're going and serving others who were in to a tough times right now. That's what I'm talking about, being proactive. And the last thing is, as I just call it, give back. That I want us to be people in the church of Jesus Christ that are not seen as takers. And sometimes, and you know this, we get a bad rap from the media, from the press, from television. Oh, these are always asking for money, asking for money. And yes, it takes money to do ministry. But I want us to be as youth leaders and children's leaders to be givers, that we find a way to give back to the community Maybe it's in a school, maybe it's to your, your um, uh, local uh, municipality, to find a way that you could serve the community and your kids could serve the community, especially as we come out of this pandemic. Listen, this won't last forever. It's going to come to an end. We're going to get back to a new normal. Maybe you don't like it used to be, but it's going to be a new normal. But when it does, let's have some ideas. Let's find some ways to roll our sleeves up and say, let's get busy for the kingdom of God. Now, let me finish. Honestly, I'm more excited about the future of the church and of youth and discipleship than I've been in a very long time. Adversity always brings about innovation. Adversity always brings about innovation. And I believe we are already in a new paradigm of the church. I know we are here in the U.S., and I think you're seeing that too. We got preachers preaching on video that's never been on video in their life. I talked to one last week. He said, I'm trying to make a video for Easter Sunday. I said, how's that working out? He said, I got this video camera. He said, I've had to rewind it 41 times because I keep saying this word wrong and he's rewinding it recording. But I said, it, it's stretching. He said, oh, it's stretching me in ways I never dreamed of. We're going to come out of this better, more proficient. I believe that. And I believe this, that, that we're already in a new paradigm. I'm praying that we will never go back and be the same. That now is the time that we that we've been preparing for. Now is the time to reach out to care for our neighbors and the world around us. Now's the time to converse, listen, pray, and give. This is what I signed up for. And God has so graciously given us the gentle shove that we needed as the church to do things differently. Let us hear the voice of the Lord. We are using discipleship. We're not reacting to a crisis. We are responding to the crisis in which we're living. And that's in the power and the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name that at that very name, demons have to flee. And I'll say this, Amen. at that very name, that we have to have, uh, that, that the enemy has to leave. And this virus is cursed because Jesus is the healer and the deliverer and the redeemer. Amen. Now, Amen. 
Amen. That's my two cents. Let me tell you this. We, we developed a page, all these guys who are a part of this, all of our directors. We wanted to provide a website, and some of this will pertain to you guys and some not. And I'm going to post it down here, if I can, in the chat box, so you guys will have it. Um, if I can do this and talk at the same time, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to uh, talk, walk and chew gum. I think that's it. Yeah, i put it in there. So everybody yep. should, be, you should be able to click on it. And it will take you to this response page. And it's just a plethora of resources. Some of it has to do with, with legal and laws inside of our country. But there's a lot of things that are ideas. And you will see immediately those four or five things about praying, connecting, and how youth and discipleship wants to do that ongoingly. But we just pray that it will be a help to you. Uh, there's tons of resources. It'll take you some time to click all through those. We're also trying now to help local churches with Bible studies. Uh, some other resources for different age levels. Our children's ministry team is working on to keep uploading. So keep ch checking that page because we're going to be adding stuff to it as we as we go um, along and along. Uh, let me just share one more challenge if I can, and I'll be done. Not long, not many days after they started giving updates here in the U.S., these doctors were on our TV and with our president, and they kept warning. They kept saying they called them out, millennials and Generation Z, stay home, stop going, stop traveling. Some of them went, thought it was spring break, went to the beaches, went to wherever, and they were just, and they said, what you don't understand, you could be a carrier of the virus, and you could bring that virus back to your grandparents, your mom, your dad, your family members. Please, just because it's not affecting you, stop going because you're carrying this virus. A few days later, I was having devotion and thinking through that. And I thought, you know, that's true. For them to get on national TV and say to the millennial generation, stop traveling because you are, you're creating this virus. You're carrying this virus. It hit me. The Holy Spirit just left in my spirit and said, not only can they be carriers of something evil and harmful, but they are carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are carriers of the light of Jesus. And that too is contagious. That too, the word is powerful. That if they would understand that God is raising them up as a generation, not just to sit at the house and play video games, but God is calling them to share their testimony through social media, through text messages, through all the means that they know how to do. They could take the gospel, be carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who knows? We could see the greatest missionary force that's ever been, been developed in the history of the world come out of a pandemic of young men and women who get down to business with God and say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to serve you. And I'm going to go into the, to the end of the world to be able to take the gospel that God could be doing that in their life right now. And I want to say to you as leaders, I'm challenging you to remind them that they're carriers, not only of evil and harmful things, but they're carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're vessels of almighty God. And that we have an opportunity to bring about revival that the church has never seen. And I pray it happened in every local church, every community, all throughout that island. I pray that it go from the north to the south and the Hallelujah. east and the west, that a wind of the Holy Spirit would touch Amen. and anoint and sweep across Jamaica like it's never seen before. I'm Amen. talking about a revival firestorm. I'm not talking about a tropical. I'm talking about something that's going to turn the hearts and lives of men Amen. and women to Amen. God Almighty, that there might be change and they might see growth and they might see that, that their family members come to Jesus Christ. I'm believing Amen. that. And I claim it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm done. Jesus. Thank you, Bishop. Come on, everybody. Say, say amen. Say hallelujah. Uh, we bless God. I want to thank you, Bishop Blair. Always such a pleasure. Bishop, uh, I was on a call the other night, and these guys created what they called a Zoom or online clap. And it was like this right here. Every time they wanted to, every time they wanted to clap or celebrate, they would do that. I'd look at the screen. Everybody's on there just going. Going like that, so you may want to take that. I, I stole it from somebody so, so, so else. These, these guys, these guys' hands are raised. They're going, They're like, yeah, yeah hallelujah, <laughs> glory. <laughs> we want to thank oh, you, sir. Goodness. We want to thank you for just simply being here and sharing with us. We appreciate and we appreciate Absolutely. what you do for our youth and discipleship, uh, not just um, in the Caribbean but across the world. This is this is a man, young people who are passionate about young people, who is passionate about young people. And we thank God for you and for the work that you are doing. Please to greet your amazing wife for us. Of course, he's going to be a granddad in a, 
in a little bit. He has a, a grandbaby on the way. Uh, I think she's due sometimes, two of them, right? So she's, they're due in, in, a, yeah, in two weeks. So we, we, we pray God's blessings upon them and safe delivery. And we really and truly bless you. At this time, we're going to ask, uh, of course, Bishop Ashram to come and just share with us for a little bit. And then we will continue. But let's, let's, just, put, let's just make Bishop Ashram welcome. All right. Um, greetings, uh, brethren. Um, let me first say, um, this is a quarantine haircut. So if you, <laughs> if you find that it's a little bit different than how I look uh, when I was Ooh. in Jamaica, it is a quarantine haircut has been done by my wife and daughter. So Ooh, um, give God thanks. We give God thanks that my head is still in a good place. You're I brave. want to greet um, your administrative bishop, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Um, W.A. Blair, a man whom I've grown to love and appreciate. Sir, thank you for your leadership to Jamaica. Thank you for your investment in our national director, uh, Bishop Pinnock. And indeed, um, thank you for your, your heart in terms of our young people. We salute you and we love and appreciate you from this side of the fence. Thank you, sir. Um, Dr. David Blair, my friend and brother, um, having worked for the past year and a half in the International Youth and Discipleship Board, um, I've learned a bit more of this individual and the man behind the title. What I want to say is beyond ministry, there are relationships. And there may come a time that, that if the Lord tarries, we may have to resign certain posts or move on. But what will remain is relationships and friendships. I want to say we have forged a friendship that is deep. Um, I appreciate this man a lot. I respect him. He's my boss. And um, he is a man that I trust. And his family, he's a, a man behind a title. He has a heart for this world. And I have never seen a passion for young people. And we sit on that board and they, you will not know, oh hallelujah, the challenges that the International Youth Board is facing right now. And we need your prayer. We need your prayer, Jamaica, with the budget cuts and the issues of negotiation and contracts and, and um, guarantees and payments and deficits and streamlining. We need your prayer. And he leads. It seems that God has him to lead through, I told him that, through some difficult periods. And it could only speak well for the character of the man. And David, I salute you. David, I salute you. I thank you. And I remember I sent you a little clip when we were in the Dominican Republic a few years ago. And where we started our relationship and the Holy Spirit descended, Leslie. And we had a, David had to share on the power of the Holy Spirit in youth ministry. And the Holy Ghost came. Yes. You know, and thank you, David. Thank you, you and Janet. And God bless you as you, you get some gray hair for, you, for those lovely children. The Bible says a blessing with those grandchildren, man. It's, you know, you, you will forever be a part of each other. My dear Leslie Pinnock, from having doubles and coconut water together, <laughs> from sleeping under the same roof, um, yeah, we share a very deep relationship. I appreciate you. I appreciate your dear wife and your two boys. You know, we, are, we serve on the Caribbean Youth Board. We give direction to the youth of our Caribbean nations. But yeah. you, are much, you are a much valuable person in my eyes. And um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your leadership in this time and your commitment. Um, you have my unfailing support. And I was looking forward to be with you at Congress. I was planning how to be there. And, um, well, praise God. God had another Congress in mind. <laughs> so, you had another um, God Congress bless anyhow. Mind. You know, um, I want to greet, greet Jamaica. I want to greet you guys who are on this chat and the structure and the fiber of the Youth and Discipleship Department. And I want to say something to you, this, we, if we never knew the story of David and Goliath, Dr. Uh, 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 David mentioned it before, but if you never knew the story of David and Goliath and you were to read about this monster or you hear about this Goliath monster, but you don't know the story well, you may have said in your mind that, you know what, this Goliath is going to lick up David and mash him up and mash him up. 
But because you know the story and the history of the Bible in David and Goliath, who wins in the end? David wins in the end. We know the story. We know the play. We know the chart. We know the course. And God wins in the end. His church wins. Amen. And he said, upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want you to understand. We, are, we know we are in an a, a, a ebb of the last day and the last times. We know that. We believe that. But there is a promise that has to be fulfilled for the church. He said in the last days, Bishop Leslie, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. We are yet to experience that revival upon the earth and if God has promised it he will bring it to pass Amen. there is a supernatural anointing that is going to come upon our young people the mantle of leadership to lead in this generation to Amen. take the church to usher in the very presence of God and we are the ones who have to carry this message to our young people I want to tell you three things three things quickly I was in my shower yesterday the Spirit of the Lord said, don't you trust me? There was a big challenge I was facing. A big, big challenge. Almost impossible. And you know, sometimes God speaks to you in strange places. To me, sometimes it's the shower or the car. I was in the shower. And sometimes you just want that water to hit your head. Especially with my new haircut. <laughs> and I felt, the Lord said, do you trust me or you don't trust me? And I felt so convicted. And you know what? Brethren, Go back and see what the Lord has done for you. Go back and see, oh hallelujah, what he has done for you in the past and where he has brought you from. And know the God that you serve. I want you to remember this. Remember your first love and ensure that you are in your first love. In the Laodicean church age, Jesus had to spit out. He rejected because the church had grown cold. Remember your first love, youth directors, youth leaders, bishops, ministers, reverend, and let that first love burn, the fire and passion of that first love burn in your heart. Two, refocus on what matters. We have been so busy with everything in this life. God has said, you know what? Shut down. Shut down. Ref let us refocus on what matters. And what matters is the gospel of Jesus Christ our families and ensuring that that we pray and have the family altar together what matters in this time and i want you to understand this expect expect a supernatural anointing to come upon your life and your leadership directors it is going to happen and we are seeing that it is happening i want you to 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 to, to take this i believe in a moment where there is lack god will give increase I believe in a moment where there is sickness, God will bring healing. I believe where there is oppression, God will bring deliverance. And it seems that God is uniting his church. Never before, as David said, that we had the opportunity to connect like how we are connecting before. God is aligning his body and the church. And I want you to focus on that. And I want you to remember in this time, the widow, the orphan, those who are underprivileged. Amen. We have to look after them. We have to help them. You directors, whatever little you can do to help a family, to help a young child, to help a widow, we should be the ones giving. And listen to me, God is no man's debtor. God is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Amen. God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provided. I want you to understand the psalmist said, I was young. Now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You are not going to beg bread in the name of Jesus. God is your supply. Amen. God is our supply. And he is faithful to us. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you something that I did and I'm doing. And just tell you, it may help you, Leslie, and, and, and so on. I want, I want you to start. Um, we are starting a Bible trivia across the districts of our country. I'm going to work out the, the mechanics, and I'm going to send you a copy tomorrow. And I want to have not only an individual from the Caribbean, but I want to have a Caribbean challenge. It, amen. It's going to be focusing on the Word of God. So you give your, your district persons who win, like five of them. They study like Acts 1 to 3. And they are questioned and Zoom on it. We're going to go Facebook and a YouTube channel live. 
So I'm going to send the mechanics to you if you could work that through your directors. All right, it will help. And we will do a Caribbean event in Zoom whereby the winning district from each country now comes up against each other. The theme of this is really focusing on the word of God because the, the amount of deception that is out there, everybody's become an end time prophet, an end time this and that. I want you to remember, follow truth. Youth leaders, follow truth. Follow Sweet. truth. It must be linked and connected Amen. to the word of God. It must be educated to the word of God. It cannot be loose and let, let fly. The amount of things, it's information overload that is on this media now. Information yeah. overload. You must focus what you're listening to. Tell the young people, check the spirits. Check what is happening. Check what comes to them. Amen. Yeah. And help them. I want to let you know that what I've decided to do here in Trinidad is that I have, I have about a hundred and something young adults in one section. And I said, you know what? I'm going to form these five committees, a social media team, a database committee, a poster design committee, a career development and resume committee, worship and music compilation committee, and a music and development training committee, and a benevolent committee. Out of all of these, I'm going to communicate and they're going to set up committees throughout the country so that we prepare and we advance the kingdom of God. We are not waiting. These committees are going to set up and they're going to be engulfed in ministry, Bishop Leslie, engulfed in ministry in these areas. Take all the resumes for the young people who need to get jobs. Put it on a database. Get things ready and expect the unexpected. We, want, we are going to get the jobs. We are going to get the revenue. We are going to inherit what God has for us. Amen. Because God Amen. is with us. I want to encourage you, you know, this is a period of dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And I feel convinced in my heart. My God, David and Leslie, I can't imagine the next time we meet face to face. Oh God, it's going to be, I figure, this revival, and this, what is, this, this thing is really contagious. But oh, the fire, the fire of God. Is we believe it. We believe it. We oh, believe and it. I'm we're seeing it. Seeing we're it. And we're going. Yeah, it, it is. It is shut up in my bones, and like I'm, I'm going off my rockers. <laughs> but I want to let you know, I love you guys. I'm here supporting, praying. We have a 24-hour prayer chain. We Genesis and Revelation 24 hours a day. We pray for the youth of the Caribbean. We pray for the okay. children of the Caribbean. The, the Z and the Alpha Z that is coming, we have the mantle. You directors understand this, and I my closing remarks. The mantle has been placed upon you and your leadership to effectively carry out the mission mandate of our Lord Jesus Christ in the, this generation. It is a serious mandate. It's a weighty mandate. And God is going to give us the supernatural anointing to achieve this Monday. Man, I bless Amen. you before I start. I bless you. Thank you for the opportunity, Bishop Leslie, Dr. Wes W. A. Blair, and Dr. David Blair. Salute you guys. Thank you. Amen. We bless God for you, Rev, and we look forward to our continued partnership as we continue to plunder hell to populate heaven uh, on this side of heaven. Appreciate you big time. And like I said, like you said earlier, we look forward to that next time when we link up and what God will do in and through us. Um, God is indeed good. Of course, we have our board, youth board members on and um, we're going to ask Reverend Robinson, Everton Robinson, to just greet us on behalf of the National Youth Board uh, at this time. Amen. Uh, I trust that everybody can hear me. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm really happy to be on board this evening and to be bringing greetings on behalf of the National Youth Board. Uh, you know, these are unprecedented times indeed. And uh, I, I heard uh, Bishop uh, Ramnarin saying a while ago that he got a haircut from his wife and daughters. Uh, well, uh, my, my wife and daughter wouldn't touch my head but, but I realized that I'm, I'm looking more and more like George Jefferson from the Jeffersons. You know, a, a little more cough around the face. But what can I say? You know, I have to stay home. I have to, as we say out here in Jamaica, turn away yard. You know, and whenever I get an opportunity to get back to the barbershop, 
I'm going to come out looking so fine. You know, but uh, these are unprecedented times. And all of us, we're facing the same kinds of struggles. We're facing the same enemy, the same virus. It's affecting all of us. And so I want to reach out to anyone who, who may have suffered personally or who may have lost a loved one to this disease, you know, uh, or suffered in any way, shape or form where this disease is concerned. You know, I, I want to reassure you that I have been praying for the young people and for the people of God, for this country and for people across the world. And I know that others have been praying as well. It is really a time for us to, to really buckle down and, and pray and to flood the atmosphere with our prayers. Because when we begin to do that, something happens in the environment, something happens in the atmosphere. And if we have people in Jamaica, people in Trinidad and Tobago, people all over the Caribbean, people all over the world praying, and I know that is happening right now, then I believe that God is going to respond to us in short order. I'd want to believe that he has already, already begun uh, to respond, and we can see some positive signs, and we're looking forward to, to better uh, uh, news and signs as the time goes by. But I want to encourage everybody to play their part and to ensure that you are doing what you need to do, following the necessary guidelines and precautions as they are issued by various governments, and uh, especially here in Jamaica, that all our young people, all our youth leaders are actually encouraging others and their charges to, to follow the necessary precautions. You know, greetings uh, are, are really in order uh, this evening to our, our administrative bishop, Reverend Dr. Willis Fabier, it is good to see you. And, and thank you so very much for the encouragement that you gave to us earlier. You know, I, I was asking, asking about you recently, you know, and somebody told me that, boy, you are, you are still strong, that you're still praying, and that you're still leading the Church of God here in Jamaica. God bless you, sir. Good to see you. Also, our, our uh, international youth director, another Bishop Blair, Bishop David Blair, uh, God bless you for your efforts and thank you for coming and, and giving such a, a powerful uh, word of encouragement to us. And uh, to our Caribbean <clears throat> Youth Director, Bishop Ramnery, you know, uh, some interesting stuff you have going there. And, and I can't wait to get whatever it is that you're going to send to uh, Leslie Pinnock so that we can all benefit from this knowing the Bible and and, and delving deeper and deeper into the Word of God. It is, it is indeed what we need more of, more of the Word of God, so that our understanding will always be awakened and, and wisdom will be in our hearts, the wisdom of the Lord. So I really just want to greet all of you. Our own uh, national director, uh, Bishop Pingot, is, is really doing a fantastic job. And, and just spearheading this this evening, I, I think it's, it's, it's a major, major move. And I can see from the various uh, text messages that are coming in on this platform that our young people, our youth leaders really appreciate it. So God bless you, Reverend Pinnock, all the other members of the National Youth Board, all the national uh, uh, youth workers and leaders, uh, district overseers, and uh, local youth directors, presidents. You know, you represent the young, uh, both uh, in age and at heart, you, you are doing a fantastic job. These are times that calls for uh, innovation. It calls for creativity. And I've seen some amount of creativity and I'm hearing about others. I know for a fact that we should come out of this better, right? Uh, we should be learning all the lessons and ensure that at the end of it all, we can all say to God be the glory, great things he has done. Youth ministries will continue. It can never stop. God is continuing to raise up more and more people, more and more generations. I believe that the work of God will be completed one way or the other because this is God's business. So God bless you, everybody. Thank you very much for having me and accept greetings in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Reverend uh, Robinson. I just want to say to uh, Bishop Blair, uh, Willesley A. Blair, and Bishop Ramnarine. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. If I decided to open up the flood, the, the lines for our youth directors to say hello, 
you probably wouldn't have ears enough to receive all the LOs. They are typing it down um, on the side because of the limited time that we have on this, but they are all just shouting out your name and just bigging you up and just saying manners and respect and how them love you and how them just want to, you know? Yeah. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for your leadership. We appreciate you and we bless God for the kind of work that you are doing. Um, I really appreciate my youth board that uh, is with me every step of the way. I have a really tremendous group of young men and women who is doing a fantastic job here in Jamaica, uh, leading over 80,000 young people. Trust me, you guys are fantastic. And I appreciate all of you, my youth board members. And, and then, of course, the ministry leaders, just fantastic job. I mean, you lead the ministries in tremendous ways. Uh, I'm confident, we are confident in you. Uh, we watch you guys as you do what God has anointed you to do. And, and when you do what you do, it makes us as leaders look good. And we appreciate you big time. Um, all of the ministry leaders right across the board and your teams, we say thank you for the kind of commitment and sacrifice and work that you are putting in. We know that you are doing an amazing job, um, and we thank you for that. Of course, COVID-19 is no stranger to any of us. All of us are affected by it.